guys, what's up? Welcome back to another Watch Me Teach. If you're new here, my name is Taylor and I'm a third grade teacher in Central California. Today we're on unit four, week four, Wonders McGraw Hill. This week our spelling words are homophones. We're gonna be going over that. We are reading about hot air balloons and practicing our cause and effect skills. I'm still working on my cause and effect skills. And yeah, I'm gonna set you guys down so you can watch. So, this week, all of our spelling words are homophones. Can you guys say homophones? Homophones. Homophones. And homophones mean that they are words that sound the same, but they have different meanings and they're spelled completely different. So I'm gonna give you some words and you are going to draw a picture of the word. Okay, write the word and draw a quick picture of the word, okay? Here, we'll do the first one and you'll totally get what I mean. Charles, what's up? Oh, okay. Get your right word, please. Okay, the first word is sail. Write the word and draw a quick picture for sail. Here we go. We'll go over the exact spelling later. I'm not too worried about the spelling. I more want to see what you picture when you think of sail. Okay, so I see that most of us think of sail. I did it. It is S A I L for. I did a boat and a lemonade sail. Yes, so we have sail like the boat, but we also have. S-A-L-E, like you might see a lemonade stand or grape stand. Lemonade stand! For sale. Yeah. yeah, lemonade stand, you might go to a, oh, maybe instead of for sale, you might see a yard sale. Oh, yeah. That was like, that was sale is when you are selling something. Sale, like the sailboat, is A-I. Sail, like there's a big sale going on, has a silent E. Or a sale of a house. Okay, erase. Next one. Peace. Peace. Draw what you think. Peace. Peace. Think of how you can use it in a sentence. This is a peaceful part. This is a peaceful part. That's one way. What's another way you can explain peace? What did you draw a picture of? A puzzle piece. Exactly. Okay, so for piece, we can have. Okay, there's piece with the I, and this is a puzzle piece. A terrible puzzle piece. But there's a piece, or you might think of, yeah, can I have a piece of pie? And we said another piece. We come in peace. I like this. So we have hot air balloons. We already discovered that this is a, what kind of text? Expository text. So that means we're gonna see real pictures. We might see some graphs that show some data. Okay, we also see some pictures, captions, all that good stuff. So our objective today is today I will identify the cause and effect in an Okay, you guys want to stand up and do it with me? Stand up, stand up, and let it go. Loud and proud, ready, go. Today, where are you? Ready, go. Today, I will identify the cause and effect in an expository text. Do you think they can tell me? You got it. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. We have hot air balloons. Our essential question is, how are people able to fly? Expository text also has little, uh, like, subtext. Okay, it's not, you know how in a narrative it's just one long story? But in expository text, we have a lot of these things that break down the story into smaller categories. What is this called? When it's like the mini title. The heading. What is it? A heading. The heading, because it's the head of that page or that paragraph. What is our heading for this one? Ready for takeoff. 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 Ready for
Take off. Let's go. Something about paper and fire. 
Okay, go ahead and take out your notebook. So, did we just start wanting to learn how to fly? But this was way back in what time period? Um, that was in the 70s. 1700s, we're in 2020. 21 actually. And we get curious to fly. We're right? in 2021. But so don't you want to learn how to fly? Yeah. And do you think your parents, when they were kids, they wanted to learn how to fly? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course. Okay. Really and then know. back in the 1700s, they all and wanted the future, to learn how to fly. I'm going to create myself a wingspan. One of our causes is going to be that people throughout history. So who are some people throughout history um, that did things because they wanted to learn how to fly? Yeah, so for a fact we have we have some stories from the Greek. The Greeks tell stories of flying. Who else? Launching a rocket. Okay, but in this one they watched the balloon launch. They watched it take off. Uh, what about popular? Popular means like um, a popular kid makes a someone else thing like this kind of toy. Okay. It's so what about it's popular right now? It's really used, it's really known. Really well known and really used a lot, right? So ballooning became very popular. Everyone wanted to try out ballooning. Are hot air balloons popular? Do you see hot air balloons a lot now? No, I see not as much. One. In certain places, they may be popular. They may be a fun um, tourist type spot. But like in here, we don't. Really but there's a place to get a sausage shape, a basket in which people rode called the gondola, gondola was enclosed and often very large. Um, enclosed means, so if you look at this little hot air balloon, do you see how they're like out in the open? Yes. Enclosed means that like it was closed, like it had a roof. It was like a little room rather than just a basket and out in the open, okay? So let's go ahead and read the directions. Describe. Describe a pattern in the table. Then complete the table. So looking at number one, number one, how are we counting? By ones. By ones. Now this bottom part, what are we counting by? Seven. How can you tell? Because seven plus seven is fourteen. Yes, one because if, it started by seven. if this starts with a seven and this starts with a one, we're okay. If it starts with a two, then we can't judge that first number. And then to double check, like I said, if I check how we got from 7 to 14, we added 7. So for this one, we add 7. So now to find our next number, we need to do what? Add another 7. We need to add another 7. It's 28. Which will be, you got it. The next one is going to be 35. Yep. And the next one is 35. Okay, another thing with this though. You can do your repeated addition. And multiplication. And multiplication. Okay, so essentially what we did was we did four times seven. If we are adding by sevens, then we are multiplying by sevens. Seven times two is 14. Seven times three, 21. Seven times four, 28. Seven times five, 35. Or you can do repeated addition. So number three, let's look at number three. How are they counting on the top? No, two, no, by ones. They're counting by ones, but what did they start with? Two. Okay, don't let this fool you. At the bottom, what are we counting by? Two, eight. You can't trust this unless this starts with a one. 
because this starts with a two, we can't trust that. So you could either, you could divide that by two. So what we can do is if we have eight, we can do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And if we're going to divide by two, is it eight? I'm going to circle groups of two. Go ahead, draw your eight circles. And now we're dividing by two, because that's this number. So we're gonna circle pairs of two, ready? So we have one, two, three, four. How many pairs do we have? Six. Four. 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 So really, this would be a one, and we're going by fours. So we're really counting by fours. But we can also just check by going, how did we get from eight to 12? Well, I'm going to go eight. And I'm going to count up to 12. Ready? Eight, nine, nine, nine 10, 11, 12. Did we add by four? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wait, let's, we can't trust the other Let's two. double check. Way too far ahead. Let's double check. So how do we get from 12 to 16? Let's see. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, so if I'm feeling fancy, now that I know my four, I can go to addition or multiplication. So I can do, excuse me, I could do five times four. What is five times four? Five times four. Five times four, so let's count by fives four times. Five, 20. So we can do 20. And then the next one's gonna be 24. How do you know? Because we just add one more. You would just add one more to that. I would just add four. You just add one more four. Because I'm showing you repeated addition, which is simple but I also really want to show you the multiplication and division side. I don't want you getting too dependent on addition. I want to know our multiplication facts and recognize division. Okay, so now I need to write a sentence here, so I'm gonna erase this. Okay, so now to explain this sentence, what did we do? We added four. No, add four for every, if we're counting by fours on the bottom, we're gonna write the word that's on the top. Okay, add four for every ticket. Or we are multiplying by what? Seven and four. No, what are we multiplying by? We're adding by four every time. It's the same as multiplying by four. These are the same. They're just vertical, okay? Horizontal and vertical, okay? These are just vertical, but the exact same thing. So, we have project teams and members. How are these counting? Wait, first, you see the three starting. So, don't let it trick you. Don't let that trick you. Let me use red. Yes, I see the three. Don't let it trick you, but how are they counting? By ones again. They're counting by one, so this is normal. What are we counting by over here? Do we know? Do we know at the top of our head what we're counting by? What's the first number? Nine. The first number is nine. But how but do we get to 12? With this three. So, if we want to go the advanced division route, we would take this nine and we would divide it by three. Go ahead and draw nine circles. One, two, three, four, five, six. I already did it, not that fast mode. I just did nine plus one equals 12. Yeah, that's fine, because really, you really can't do, well, what is, how did we get from nine to 12? That's right. Nine, 10, 11, 12. So we'd add three. I want to let you guys know the division part, though. So we see nine. I'm going to divide by this number, which is three. So we're going to circle groups of three. So I have one. Yeah. This is division. We drew nine circles. We're dividing it by groups of three. So I'm going to circle groups of three. So I have one there. Two there. Now I get it. Okay. Three. One. Two. It looks like little pizzas. Yeah. So all it is, we have our big number. And we're saying, well, how many do I want in each group? I want three in each group. And then I count how many groups I have. This one, it just tends to be three on both sides. The number going to be? <coughs> Stop with the noises. Yes? 15. 
Okay, because all we did here was add another three. Three. three and if we're adding by three, that means we're also what by three? Dividing by three. Dividing by three and also multiplying by, multiplying by three. Guys, multiplication and division, they're like cousins. They're all part of that same family. Okay, so then what's going to be our one for seven? We could do uh, seven times three and get 21. Or we can add 18 plus three and get 21. If we're adding by three on this side, we need to look at this. Remember. No, we added three on members. So, we're gonna add by three members for every team. Okay, when you are done, you're gonna go ahead and do number five on your own. Okay. What are we gonna do here? What are we adding by? Well, let's count. How did I get from eight to 16? So let's put eight in our head and count on our fingers to 16. Ready, eight. <laughs> Good, how many is on your fingers? Eight. Yeah, so we added eight. So right here, put plus eight. Okay, so that means all of these, so when we move up, we're gonna add eight. So now let's do 16 in our head. We're gonna add eight to find the missing number. So 16 in your head, eight on your fingers. So I have eight. Wait, no, we're at 16. 17. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Go ahead, write it. You add by eight to get your answer. So you add eight for every table. Because this is mm -hmm. saying if we have one table, I need eight chairs. I have five tables. I need you to check this one for me, though. I count 32 up eight times on this side because we're adding eight every time, right? Mm -hmm. So add eight chairs for every table because if I have one table I need eight chairs two tables I'm gonna need 16 chairs if I need five tables I'm gonna need four chairs that's a lot of chairs it is <laughs> okay. do I have a brave soul that can come up and solve number five Ooh. let's do Good, so what do we add by? Eight. Yeah. Okay, next one. Wonderful. Thank you, Jude. You're good to go. Please excuse the interruption. I almost missed this very special announcement. Last week, our Spirited Pride winners, and we had some classes that did very well, but one class had 100% of their students wore red or black or white, all of our colors that we have that show that we have uh, pride in. Classrooms going to have a panther outside their classroom, and uh, we want to congratulate them for, for uh, wearing as much Spirit and Pride as they can. That classroom is Mrs. Blair's class. Yeah. So congratulations, Mrs. Blair's class. Great job, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're about 5.2. 5.2 will be for homework. You're gonna take it home, but you're gonna take a picture and put it on what? Class kit. Class kit. Okay. A spelling homework will be on Canvas. All right. Um, we weren't able to finish our full story today. Okay, so that means we're gonna have to pay major attention Thursday and Friday to find out the end of our story. You guys did really good today. I'm sorry I'm going to see you one day this week, but you guys are amazing. I love you guys. And I'll see you tomorrow. What time? Hey! Hey! Okay. Go for it. Tomorrow?